Thank you, Dr. The Honorable Fenton Ferguson, Minister of Health of Jamaica, Dr. The Honorable Faud Khan, Minister of Health of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, other Ministers of Health of Guyana and St. Martin, His Excellency Owen Larock, Secretary General of CARICOM, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Sir George Allen, Director Emeritus of PAHO, officials, distinguished colleagues, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to stand here today at this opening of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA. I know today many of our public health leaders are very proud of the sterling contribution that they have made in getting CAFA on its feet. The launch of CAFA is a significant milestone for public health development in the Caribbean as it represents the realization of a 40-year-old vision for a Caribbean-wide public health agency. The Pan American Health Organization has been responsible for the administration of the Caribbean Food and Nutrition Institute since 1967 and for the Caribbean Epidemiological Center, CAREC, since 1974, a period of nearly four decades with key successes in providing leadership in surveillance and response across a number of disease areas, including HIV AIDS and measles elimination, in strengthening laboratory diagnostic capacity, and in food and nutrition. PAHO's stewardship of these two agencies ended in 2012 with their transfer to CAFA. The integration of the five Caribbean regional health institutions fulfilled the 2007 mandates of CARICOM heads of state. CAFA is now ready to begin its work and prove the wisdom of that decision. The Caribbean has always viewed health as a pillar of development and has articulated its health agenda covering at least eight areas of work through the Caribbean Corporation in Health since 1984. The challenges facing public health in the Caribbean are many and provide a sobering but also a hopeful context for CAFR's work. These challenges include the impact of the global financial recession on our Caribbean economies, which are particularly vulnerable because of their heavy dependence on tourism and direct investments. The positioning of the Caribbean as a prime tourist destination results in large numbers of visitors to this subregion annually. This has the potential for importation of new diseases as well as the reintroduction of some previously eliminated, such as measles. On the other hand, each country also has to cope with the perennial out-migration of skilled professionals and technical expertise whose talents are needed to support a robust public health system. Other challenges include the environment and health impacts, both current and potential, of climate change and the negative effects of the globalization of modern lifestyles, especially modern diets and physical inactivity. This latter phenomenon has led to the epidemic of non-communicable diseases and obesity, with childhood obesity emerging as a health and social justice issue, as children are being specifically targeted by food companies, even though these children are unable to make rational choices for their dietary health. At the other end of the spectrum, the Caribbean population is aging rapidly at a much higher rate than was experienced in Europe, a situation which is generating challenges of increasing rates of dementia, chronic diseases, dependency, and disability. Our Caribbean countries must also continue to cope with the impact of the illegal drug trade and its associated substance abuse and violence on our fragile communities. At the same time, the expectations of our peoples as regard health and the application of new healthcare technologies continue to escalate. All of these, CAFA must address. In order to effectively address these challenges of the 21st century, 
it is clear that all sectors of government must critically consider the health impacts of their individual sector policies when planning and mobilizing resources as some of the key causes of many health problems as well as the appropriate interventions often lie outside of the health sector. It is therefore imperative that an all of government approach be taken and that the business of health is not seen solely as under the purview and responsibility of the Ministry of Health. While governments have an important leadership and enabling role for policy development, the implementation of such policies requires an all of society approach that includes civil society and private sector within an ethical framework. The CARICOM heads of governments in the signing of the Port of Spain Declaration of 2007 were extremely visionary in prioritizing the need to stop the epidemic of non-communicable diseases and in requiring the participation of all sectors, including those of trade, agriculture, and education. How will CAFA help us face these and other challenges? My vision of CAFA is one of a pan-Caribbean cooperation agency that both embodies and promotes excellence in the performance of key public health functions to prevent disease and promote and protect health. Dynamic, proactive, anticipatory leadership is essential, and this must be underpinned by the formulation of health policies that are protected from influence by commercial or vested interests. From where I stand, universal health coverage is the strategy to achieve such health and well-being in the Caribbean. And that by that I mean not just universal health care on paper, but ensuring that everyone has access to quality care they need without fear of impoverishment. I believe that universal health coverage runs the spectrum of promotion, prevention, diagnosis, treatment, palliation, and rehabilitation. This is not an easy goal to achieve, but I know that it is attainable, and I know that it is desirable public policy as well from, as from an economic point of view. PAHO has committed itself to promoting and facilitating the achievement of universal health coverage, and we look forward to working together with CAFA to strengthen efforts in the Caribbean towards this goal. CAFA is rooted in the legacy of five long-term regional health institutions, and as such, it begins its new life with solid experience in all of these areas. Its new structure and governance are designed to ensure that it carries out and promotes each of these functions in the most efficient and effective manner. Here, branding of this new agency is important if CAFA is to become a household name in the Caribbean. But CAFA's future success will depend not only on its own performance, but also on the support and proactive involvement of all of its member countries. CAFA is, after all, a pan-Caribbean cooperation institution. I wish to assure you that PAHO is fully committed to the success of CAFA. We do take pride in our stewardship role in CARIC and CFNI over many years, and we can claim some credit for our role in CAFA's creation. We feel that we must have a strong stake in ensuring that this fledgling agency grows and develops to its full potential. I want to wish CAFA well. I want to, where's James? I need to assure James that I'm your friend and I will be walking with you as you, as you make this journey, which is, will be a challenging one. Once again, it gives me immense pleasure to represent PAHO here today as this promising new entity begins its operational life. I would like to commend CARICOM for shouldering the task of establishing this new agency and again to congratulate James on assuming this new and challenging role. I pledge my full support and that of PAHO to help CAFA realize its mission of protecting and promoting 
the health of every man, woman, and child throughout this region. Thank you.